Let us restore hope. The quotation from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, chapter 15, verse 13, says, May the God of hope fill you with joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Dear fellow Kenyans, and all people of goodwill. We, the Kenya Conference of Catholic Bishops, thank God for the gift of every Kenyan and all people who live and work in Kenya. We do not take for granted God's loving care for this country and its people. In addition, we thank God for the gift of our beautiful country, Kenya, we are grateful to all Kenyans who remain peaceful and active in useful economic engagement and in deepening our democracy even in very challenging situations. Peace in our country. We thank the government for its efforts to ensure peace is maintained. This is one of the major aspirations of all Kenyans. In a world marked with deadly political conflicts, as we witness in the Middle East, and internal strife in several African countries, we do not take for granted the general environment of relative peace we enjoy. We know we are still far from achieving full order in our affairs, but nevertheless appreciate where we are. We continue to pray, to pray for peace and stability within our borders and for our brothers and sisters living in unstable environments in many parts of the world. Issues of concern. We, the Kenya Conference of Catholic Bishops, feel compelled to voice our grave concerns regarding the troubling political climate that has gripped our country. We have made clear statements many times in the recent past with very little response from the government. Despite the calmness we are experiencing, there is a lot of anxiety and most people are losing trust in the government. Consequently, we raise these important observations and concerns that should be addressed. The first, political wrangles. The political wrangles in the government have generated unwanted tensions and deepened divisions among our people. Further, it has created an environment of mistrust among the citizens and within the government itself. Number two, corruption and politics of self-interest. The elected leaders have been mandated to fulfill roles conferred to them by the Constitution. They are among the highest paid legislators in the world. We are troubled by their heightened insensitivity and irresponsibility in carrying out their tasks, allowing themselves to be captured and compromised in corrupt deals. Corruption may not always involve financial benefits but the unjust use of position and authority or abuse of office. The massive greed we are witnessing is shocking 
and heartbreaking. The violation of human rights and freedom of speech. We are appalled by the blatant recurring incidents of reported abductions, disappearances, torture, and killings of Kenyans. We also decry the increasing murder of women. This has caused great consternation, anger, and disgust. Many families are still grappling with the loss of their children who are brutally killed, injured, or went missing following what is referred to as the Gen Z demonstrations in June 2024. Many of these victims had raised concerns about rampant corruption within and outside the government. Who is abducting these people? And is the government unable to stop these abductions and killings? The government must protect the life of every human person in Kenya as stipulated in our Constitution of the Republic of Kenya, Article 26. The government must take the lead in following the law which the leadership took an oath to uphold and defend at all times. Culture of lies, NHI. The culture of lies is swiftly replacing the integrity and respect that Kenyans deserve. Basically, it seems that truth does not exist, and if it does, it's only what the government says. Unfortunately, it seems that the Kenyans have helplessly tolerated the lies told to them constantly by politicians. Kenyans must learn not to applaud or validate the lies or validate the lies that the politicians tell them, but rather must resolve to seek and be led by the truth. When the government fails to fulfill its promises, particularly concerning payments to essential service providers, it harms vulnerable communities. This is the case with NHIF. The neglect of faith-based organizations Hospitals, now owed billions in dues, is an issue we have addressed constantly, even with the President. We recall the pertinent and resolved issues we have raised recently with the government over taxation of Kenyans, the hiking of the missionary work permits, youth unemployment, regulations of the education system, especially the CBC and university loan scheme, the failure to constitute the IEBC, etc. We believe that genuine consultation of all concerned stakeholders in all these matters is necessary beyond the casual public participation. This culture of lies, unkept promises, and misplaced priorities is unacceptable and needs to be dealt with. Selfish agenda to extend the term of elected leaders. It is baffling that a bill proposing an extension of the five-year term to seven years is being considered, and apparently there are plans to rush it through the legislative system. A two-term limit of ten years, a two-term limit of ten years, as given by the current constitution, is ample time for any visionary political leader to leave a strong legacy if they perform. We need to critically scrutinize this political move. We question the motivation behind this agenda and the long-term interests it serves. We strongly condemn this retrogressive and manipulative thinking. Let us not create problems where there are none.
We have matters of national concern, such as the crumbling CBC education system, health care services, reconstitution of the IEBC, a huge block of, unedu of educated but unemployed youth, and fighting the monster of corruption, among others, that are surely top priorities. Overtaxing Kenyans. We all know that the government raises its revenue primarily through taxes. Our problem is that Kenyans are being unreasonably overtaxed. We are vehemently concerned by the continued myriad of new tax regimes that are constantly emerging from day to day. It seems to be a hidden way of reintroducing the rejected fin Finance Bill 2024. We must listen keenly to the cry of the Kenyan people. The current tax regime is al already prohibitive and burdensome. As Catholic bishops, we have many times reminded the government of the need to put to good use all the collected revenue and live within its means. Conclusion. We thank God for holding our country together despite the political and social upheav upheavals. We pray that our leaders, guided by the values of justice, mercy, humility, selflessness, and honesty, provide good leadership and governance to our nation in accordance with God's will. What does the Lord God require of us and our leadership? As the prophet Micah says, I quote, you have been told, O mortal man, what is good and what the Lord requires of you, only to do justice and to love goodness and to walk humbly with your God. End of quotation from Micah chapter 6, verse 8. We invite all Kenyans and all people of faith to prayer, especially when we see that the tentacles of evil seem to be seizing our nation. We also invite our fellow Catholics, as we prepare for the Jubilee year of 2025, to pray for our country as pilgrims of hope. We are all called to walk together always, keeping our gaze at the risen Christ with hope. This statement has been signed by me as the chair of the Kenya Conference of Catholic Bishops, Archbishop Morris Muhatia Makumba, and present in this are all the Kenya Conference of Catholic Bishops members. That is most Reverend Anthony Moeria, the Vice Chairperson, Archbishop of Nyeri, Apostolic Administrator of Embu, most Reverend Martin Kewuwa Msonde, Archbishop of Mombasa, most Reverend Philip Agnolo, Archbishop of Nairobi, Right Reverend Joseph, Mairura Okemwa, Bishop of Kisi, Right Reverend Alfred Rotich, Bishop of Kericho, Right Reverend Norman Kingowambua, Bishop of Machakos and Apostolic Administrator of Wote, Right Reverend Peter Kiara, Bishop of Marsabit, Right Reverend David Kamau Nanga, Auxiliary Bishop of Nairobi, Right Reverend Celestius Mugambi, Bishop of Meru, Right Reverend James Maria Wainaina, Bishop of Muranga, Right Reverend Paul Kariukinjiru, Bishop of Wote, Right Reverend Dominic Kimengich, Bishop of Eldoret, Right Reverend John Obala Owa, Bishop of Ngong, Right Reverend Joseph Mbatia, Bishop of Nyaururu, Right Reverend Joseph Obanyi Sagwe, Bishop of Kakamega, Right Reverend Joseph Mongela, which serve many of our people in all our, across our country, in all the counties, and serve the most, some of the most 
needy Kenyans in the far distant places, it is very difficult for them to operate. What is happening is that the staff are going for months without salaries. We cannot purchase even basic medical supplies to look after patients. But the situation in the hospitals is serious. It is desperate. It is desperate because it is affecting some of the most needy Kenyans who are served by these faith-based hospitals and medical centers. That's so why we are appealing to the government to move the speed and pay, reimburse the money spent and which are due from NHIF and now SHIF or Isha, whichever case it may be, the hospitals are crippled. They cannot serve our people, especially the most needy, because of this serious anomaly. Thank you. I can share my from that. The Catholic and the Protestant, the Catholic and the Protestant hospitals are old, or were old. Three billion Kenyan shillings by NHIF by the time it closed its doors. That's how bad it is. It really talks about this and uh, as we have heard it's a great concern for us also that people are being abducted. We have reports of people being, being killed so, so definitely, that is why we are mentioning this concern, and um, we are also, maybe some of us are in touch with the victims, I mean those families and all that, so as church we also try to console them. But the key thing is that this is unacceptable, and it should not be happening in our country. Uh, it is not our responsibility to know the details of this. The church doesn't have uh, security agencies. We know who was the mandate to protect the country. That's why we must voice this out and speak on behalf of the very helpless, many Kenyans, many who are dying, many who are getting lost, some who have died or some who have gone missing and cannot be accounted for. We cannot live in a country where human life is treated like the life of a chicken. This is what we are trying to raise. And we shall continue voicing this out, that the lives of people living within the borders of our country are protected as per the Constitution. ...for marriage and accompaniment of families. And we have interventions through marriage and counter couples for Christ. But the onus and the responsibility of the government that we vote as a family is to protect it by giving it a prime place so that the church is able to journey with them. The family is forth from outside because things like contraceptives, things like abortion, things like neglect, even during maternal or paternal leave, the government does not give any except when it wants the votes from the family. So we are sending a clarion call that the family, a happy family, is a happy nation. So take care of the family. And we have countries that have even a minister for the family, like Hungary and many other countries. Would we be also, as a country, look at the family as uh, people of Kenya. So we want to send a clarion call and continue to voice this that the family ought to be taken care of. And the nation, the state, the government has a responsibility. And even in passing laws, the people in parliament are elected by members of these families. But after election, then they are not given a prime of place. So the church voices this, that we need to work together, as mentioned in the text of the message, that there is a room for us to consult and even dialogue on issues about the family. Kenya is a beautiful country, and we are a, a united, but 
what makes us not to take care of the family. Thank you. One more question. End of communication. And I think we do what we have to do as church. We follow all the structures as expected of us. And whoever needs to receive information uh, through the proper channels, we make sure they receive the information. If there's no response, we can only keep quiet. We'll keep on raising these pertinent issues in our country to make sure that we create a country where everybody feels at home and everybody's life is not only appreciated, protected, and every Kenyan and every citizen, those who live within the borders of Kenya, especially the issue of life, they feel protected. And I think this is something uh, that the Catholic Church has not been slow to follow all the necessary channels to raise these issues with the right officers in our country. And we will continue doing it. There are wrangles in leadership. And when there are wrangles, development stalls, okay? Uh, the issue of Makanga and the river is not really within the uh, parameters or what the statement of the Catholic bishops is, is, is going, giving today. You are saying, whichever wrangle, whether it's by the Makanga, or by the river is affecting development of our country. We are not moving forward. So we need a bit of more cohesion in the leadership in the government for us to move forward as we begin preparing the next two years for the next elections. Thank you. Yes, yes, no politicians in our pulpit. I don't want to speak for others, but in our pulpits, we have tried to make sure that they are not used for political ends. Thank you. 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 Thank you.